All right, we're in the process of installing or wiring in our box. So this is the cable we got. It is marine grade 12-3 uh, cable, so it should be good for 20 amps. We're gonna put our first outlet right here, and it's also gonna power the little AC guy that's in here. So that thing draws um, about four and a half amps when we test it out. So this 20 amp should be more than enough for this is going to be in common with all of the bays. So all of the bays will share one 20 amp circuit. So um, we've got all our breakers in now. So we went to Lowe's and just bought a bunch of breakers. So they're all in there and everything's pretty much ready to be wired. So this is our first circuit. So um, it'll come in here. Um, we are going to GFCI protect all these outside ones. So it'll go in there. So we've wired all of the bays now. So we've all of the bays now have an AC plug in them, um, one per bay, just in case we have to use a power tool or we need some sort of light or some like power accessories in the bays. So each bay has one. This one here is GFCI, so they're all GFCI protected from this one. Um, we've gone through and we've wired, we've labeled all of the wires wherever we can. So because we know once a bunch of wires get in here, it's gonna be really hard to tell what's going where. So wherever we can, we've labeled um, what that wire is for. All right, so when we originally planned for this, um, we bought all 12-3 cable. And so we bought all 20 amp circuit breakers, but when we went to wire our AC, we noticed that the gauge was only 14 gauge, which is only rated for 15 amps. So what could happen is, if it gives it the full 20 amps, um, that wire isn't rated for it, so it could overheat and melt or cause a fire or something like that. So we've gone back through and replaced that one breaker with a 15 amp breaker. Uh, because the wires are only 14 gauge, and so um, we tried to to match the amperage there. Since that's the only thing on that circuit, it made sense to, to make that one a 15 amp one. Okay, so we've started running our cable for the outlet in the back for the engine heaters. So we've started on here. We've got two holes drilled here that we've got the the uh, pinch connects or the service connects in and then it comes under under and then we actually drilled a hole up through the bottom there and it goes up and over the wheel well with some other cabling and then down into this box and so we've got it here and then it'll go through another service connect that we have there and then um, we've 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 attached the box, but we haven't wired anything in yet. So there's the box. All right, so we've been using these spade connectors um, because this is marine grade cable. And as you can see, it isn't solid. Um, like most cable is, um, like the cable you run in your house. So we've had to do that because um, these little guys um, try to pinch the wire, but the, it's just not good enough. So we've kind of had to put put a spade connector. And so the other thing we've been using is these ferrules, um, just again to keep the wires when we insert them into the into the connections just to keep the wire so that it doesn't splay out or anything it just fits right in there I'm going to feed it through so I can actually work on it and then I'll feed it back in. So black goes to hot. White goes to neutral. Okay, 
So he's wired in now. Should be good. So gotta pull the wire back out. A little bit. Alright, so we've got it wired up. We've got both of our engine heaters plugged into it. Um, it's in a weatherproof box, so hopefully it'll keep it nice and protected from the weather. So we're going to pull this through this little excess we're probably going to keep in that bay. Just in case we ever have to work on it again, there'll be a little bit of a, a loop of wire so that we can work on it a little bit. But then we'll pull the rest of the wire over there, get it ready to uh, wire into the circuit breaker. see if these will even. I think that this one's going to need to be longer. What does it do? What does what do? The thing that you're working on. It's a circuit breaker. What does it do? It makes sure that too much amperage doesn't get into the circuit. Hmm. Do you need to label anything more? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, it's the end of the day. Um, we've wired up one side. So the passenger side has been wired. Um, so we tried to divide the box um, so that there's two rows. And so the passenger side corresponds with the passenger and the driver's side dri uh, corresponds with the driver. So today we focused on the passenger side. So we've got the box all wired up uh, mostly. And so we've wired it all in and all the circuit breakers are wired. All right, we're starting to work on driver's side circuits today. So that So one of the things that we're trying to do is to label all the wires as they pass through each bay. Um, since we're gonna have huge bundles, and this this one's not even done yet, um, there's still gonna be a, a few more wires running in this bundle in this bay. Um, and so we're trying to label both like where they come into the bay and then somewhere, somewhere in the middle, and then again where they go out. Um, so that if we ever have to troubleshoot and come in here, and <clears throat> we're looking for things, it'll be easy no matter where we're looking to really pick out which wire uh, we need to work with. So that's what I'm working on while Juan is wiring up the circuit breakers is I'm going through and labeling um, each of the wires. So that's what I'm working on now. Okay, so we've finished wiring our load center. So we have 11 circuits that we've wired in and we've purposefully left out the uh, 12th circuit um, because there's a possibility that we could be running an electric hot water heater. We haven't made that decision yet, but we're, we went to a rally this weekend and everyone was running electric hot water heaters and I was always under the impression that those didn't work very well or that they used a lot of energy, but these people said no. So I, <laughs> I don't know, we're still researching it. Um, we wanted an instant hot water heater, a tankless hot water system, so we'll see. But these are the AC circuits for now. So they're all 20 amp with the exclusion of our mini split AC. 
uh, which is only 15 amp because of his wiring requirements. So um, they these ones um, go here and they're routed over here. And so we've uh, we've labeled them all, and they they all go through service entrances that we can then clamp and keep them from vibrating. These are temporarily um, just kind of pinned up and out of the way, uh, just so we could get a feel for how the run was. So instead of having a cable drooping here all over and getting in the way all the time, we just sort of tacked them up, and we will do something to. Um, either dress this up or pin it up in a more permanent way. But we've done that in all the bays. Um, we've gone ahead and, we've gone ahead and tacked them up just right. for now. So this is the other side of the electrical bay. So we have a hole up there that we've got the cables coming out of. These are not tacked up in any way, um, but they will be up, uh, up, up under that lip that's under there. This one will come up under here. Um, and he's the guy that goes to the front the front room. So that one will supply power to the front room. And then we've got the wires coming through here. There's also an outlet up here. Um, so they'll come through the AC bay up onto the roof, which we've only tacked up a little bit, in through this service connect, and then across um, to all of the bays. And then this one comes up and feeds uh, one of the kitchens, a bathroom, and the washer and dryer. So um, the reason we put so many circuits in is because um, we've heard too many stories of, well, I can't run the microwave when I run the air conditioner. I can't run the, uh, the air conditioner and blow dry my hair, or I can't um, have a space heater and run the AC. So we wanted to kind of distribute the load, since we're gonna be living in this thing full time, um, the way it makes sense. So this made sense to us. <laughs> we'll give you feedback when we start using it on if it actually worked the way we thought it worked. But we've got some extra space in some of these holes because we still need to run DC lines. So DC lines, um, that's the 12 volt, are gonna be run for lighting and fans on the inside. And then on the bottom, they're gonna be run for pumps. So that's the plans for DC and for these guys. All right, in here, we just have the cable coming up. Um, and we just have a short length of cable, so this will reach the first outlet on each of these circuits. So we have the front room. This is kitchen, I think this is kitchen A. So one, we have two in the kitchen. So kitchen B is over here, along with the bathroom. The washer dryer will be here. Um, back in the back, the engine heater had to come up and over and then down into that panel because of the wheels and the wheel wells. And then this will be for the back bedroom. So the kids, the kids outlet. Um, I believe this one is for our pantry area, which will be the microwave. So the microwave will be here. And then the refrigerator is on its own dedicated circuit. So that's the inside. We just have the wires coming in just a little ways. And, um, for all those runs, um, we bought 500 feet of cable and we've used, um, we bought two spools like this, each 250 feet, and we used most of one spool and still have, we could have maybe done it all with one spool, but we were afraid to run it all and then we'd be at the end, we'd be like, oh no, we're six inches short. So we didn't do that. Instead, we ran a fresh piece of wire off the new spool. But we're pretty sure we could have done the entire thing, uh, at least on the bottom, off of one spool. All right, so that's the overview of, our, of the beginnings of our 120 power wiring. Now, we've wired all this up, and fortunately, we're lucky enough to have a good friend that lives two houses down who's a master electrician. So we're gonna have him come down here and check all this stuff out and make sure we didn't mess something up or do something that would be um, dangerous or anything like that. So he's a really good guy. Now that this is done, we've got to focus on maybe 12 volts and then plumbing and then we'll be ready to start tackling the inside. So we're getting kind of excited uh, about um, actually seeing some of this stuff actually come together.